Hello students, uh, let me welcome you to this module, Biology Didactics and Learner Support. My name is Ms. Kashiakumwa, and my contact details are there, as shown on the screen. You can contact me on my phone number or on my email. I will be your new tutor for this module. So I will take you through this presentation, which is aimed to give you a clue of what to expect through the three examination that will be conducted. So through the examination, the three examinations that will be conducted in April, August, in November. It is very important that you study through your prescribed study guide throughout because all the units, unit 1 to unit 22, are randomly covered in all these question papers, in all the three question papers. So each question paper is consists of 130 mark and you remember your assignment contributes 40% towards your final pass. All the questions in the assignments and in the examination are compulsory. So you need to answer all the questions. Now for those students that have, that have handed in the assignment in previous year, that have not handed in the assignment for the year 2022, Kindly make sure that you familiarize yourself with this year's assignment because this year's assignment is used in preparation for your examination for 2022. So if you didn't hand in the assignment for this year, make sure you familiarize yourself with that assignment. The aim for the assignment is to help you to provide an overview of the structure of the examination paper. So it will give you a clue of how the questions will come, although it's not the exactly uh, the same question that you find in the assignment, they won't be in the question paper, but it will give you the structure of how the questions will be and what type of questions are expected in the examination. So you need, that's why we are saying you need to familiarize yourself with the latest assignment for this year. It will also give you guidance on how to, to approach your questions in the examination. So this, this um, module's assignment is in line with the prescribed subject content and the assignment also covers all units, all units, the 22 units. So it's easier to prepare for examination if you go through the assignment. And it helps you um, to be able to analyze and be able to apply information on the dis different scenario on teaching profession. Uh, below there are just a few steps on what on what to do when you are writing your assignment, so that your, your assignment can be of good quality. So just familiarize yourself with the topics on your study guide. Uh, don't just uh, try to copy information, copy and paste for, for your assignment. Make sure always you spend time on your assignment, you read through the topics, you know the instructions, and understand the specific questions and what the instruction is requiring from that uh, topic so for you to be able to really uh, get a good assignment having in mind that this contributes to your pass mark so always gather as much information and enough information when you are studying uh, not only for your assignment but also for your examination and always make time to write your assignment and submit it on time. Don't do the last minute work. So those are just some of the tips. The rest you can go through on your own. So now we are going to 
focus more on the purpose for this presentation, which is to prepare you for the upcoming examination, whether you are taking it in April or you are taking it in August or in November. So this presentation is supposed to help you through, to guide you how to approach your questions and what to look for, which topics to focus on when you are preparing for your examination. Also, make sure you don't repeat the common errors that most of the students uh, are doing. D don't come to the examination unprepared. Always make sure you are fully prepared in order for you to perform to your best. I just want to caution you on the rules for the examination. It should be yourself that must write this examination. Don't ask your expert friend to come and sit in for you. This is a serious offense. If somebody writes the examination for you, you can be expelled from the institution. So it is not allowed for somebody else to sit in for your examination. And while you are writing your examination, you cannot use the internet or any other sources. You are not even supposed to have any of the study materials that you have used anywhere near you. You are not supposed to use any sources while you are writing examination. Always what is important and what will help you to be able to pass your examination will also look at the allocation of the marks. It's important. Sometimes a person just look at uh, a space and they think, ah, discuss, they put three lines, but then the question is having 19 marks. How will you score all the 19 marks for five lines? So look at the allocation of the mark. It will help you to be able to, to see what is expected of you exactly for that specific question. In the examination, there are verbs that are normally used when we ask the questions. Those verbs are also very well explained in your study guide, as indicated on this slide, and you need to know the meaning and what exactly is expected of you when these words are used in a, in a specific question. If a person is asking, criticize, what is required of you? You need to state what it is and what are your opinion about it. So you critically uh, go through this, uh, whatever you are given, so criticize. If a person is saying differentiate, it means you have uh, two different scenarios and you need to give the differences between A and B. And you use the word, the language to differentiate also between these items. So all these words, estimate, list, know what is entailed for each of the words when you find it in a question. If you need to explain, then you need to give the reasons. Why did this happen? So always make sure you, you are familiar with these verbs because they are very important in the examination. Okay, so... Now, the overview of your uh, examination, remember, all the 22 units are covered randomly. So you cannot only choose one topic that maybe will only focus on that. You will also see as we come through the topics, you will see these topics they have covered all the, from the unit one to the last unit. So you need to look at all the units and your Paper have three sections, all the papers. Uh, there will be multiple choice questions, uh, true and false, and structured questions. And each question paper is having 10 to 11 questions that you need to 
answer because all the questions need are compulsory. There is no choosing or anything. You have to answer all the questions. And each of the paper, the question paper is consisting of 130 mark. And remember, your examination contributes 60% to your final mark. As we have previously said, all the units are covered randomly. So students, you must um, be aware of the common mistakes that most people make during the examinations. So you should avoid these mistakes in order to pass well your examination. Always read the instructions. It's very important. If you don't read the instruction, you will not understand what is required of you. And therefore, you will fail to answer the questions accordingly. So always read the questions with understanding. Don't rush through your questions. The time allocated is always enough. Not to say um, spend too much time on one question, but make sure you attend to each question with time. Read with understanding so you will be able to give what is expected of you. And as well as you make sure you understand the different verbs that we have already dealt with. If a question is asking you to describe, you do that. And when you are using examples, always be specific. Do not generalize your, your examples. Always be specific. It will help you. Now we are going to tackle a few of the, the topics that are covered in your study guide. And you make sure you go through the topics thoroughly, not only the points that I will talk about, but you have to go through the whole topic. One of the major um, things that we look at when you look at the biology syllabus, grade 10 and grade 12 syllabi, we know it's different. How are these syllabi different? So make sure you know the main differences as stipulated in your study guide of between the grade 10 and grade 12 syllabus. In, in terms of the terminologies used, the question papers, the subject content, it, all these things, they differ. So you make sure you familiarize yourself with that topic of the differences between grade 10 and grade 12 syllabus. The role of verbs in uh, teaching and assessment, um, how to use the different verbs, is they are being used in your question paper. Now, you should also be able to use these words when you set question papers for your learners, when you are assessing your learners. So these are the same verbs they will find in the grade 10 and grade 12 syllabus. So the role of these verbs, it's very important. You go through uh, that topic as it's covered in your study guide. We look at also the importance of practical work in biology laboratories. Biology is a practical subject. For a learner to study biology and not do practical work is, is, is an injustice. So we need to look at this concept and how a teacher should even be able to improvise. If, let's say, there is no a specific classroom, is a lab at the school. Some schools are not... Uh, fortunate to have a laboratory for biology, but you as a biology teacher can make your classroom to be a lab. And also every time when the, the learners are carrying out the practical work, it's very important that this practical work is assessed. And the learners, they learn best by doing. And when they do the practicals, that's when they learn the most. But a good biology teacher knows what are the do's and what are the don'ts in a biology lab, whether it's a lab as it is or your class that you are using as a lab, if there is no lab in, the, in that specific school. So this 
uh, items, make sure you look at them uh, through your study guide. And the concept of learner-centered education, they are just the two styles of teaching. It's either learner-centered or it's teacher-centered. So these uh, two types, you can incorporate them both in your teaching, but an ideal biology teacher engage more in the learner-centered education. You need to engage the learners more in their own learning. They, they learn by doing, they learn by being involved, not only the teacher doing everything for them and giving instructions. So what are the best practices a teacher can use to make sure that they carry out the learner-centered approach? So how you, you look at how the learners can work together in the classroom, how you can assist them to be able to come up with a meaningful concept in the class. So those kind of items, you, you make sure you cover them in your study guide. And also the role of diagrams and pictures. These, uh, the diagrams and the pictures, they help in clarifying uh, sometimes complicated topics. If you put them in diagram form, then the learners, they grasp them better. How can you incorporate diagrams and pictures in your lessons? And what specific topics you need to use uh, this type of uh, media? So it's also very important. And you need to also familiarize yourself with difficulties that the Namibian uh, secondary learners experience in biology. You know, when you are, you, Sometimes when you do the assessment at the end of the year or uh, let's say you are marking biology, you will see there is a specific topic that all learners, they just have a, a struggle with or they just getting the questions, uh, the, the answers wrong. So these are the things that you need to look at as you are, as you are teaching uh, as a biology teacher and look at what are the difficulties and how can you help these learners overcome these difficulties? And your study guide is helping you on that. What are, it will give you the tips on how to deal with that. So some of the problems or difficulties are common, not only going to be in your school, but in all the Namibian schools, wherever you find yourself teaching. So you make sure, sure you familiarize yourself with this topic and how to overcome it and how to help the learners overcome the specific difficulties they have in the subject. Okay, one of the concepts that is also very important is how to motivate learners. Not all learners are self-motivated. Not all learners come to school and they have that zeal to learn. Some of them, they come just because somebody saying go to school, they can't stay at home. As a biology teacher, how will you be able to help these learners to be motivated? If the learner is unmotivated, they will not pass that subject. If they are just coming for school for the sake of coming to school, and some of them, uh, maybe they don't even like biology, they didn't even want to choose biology. And you will hear because the parents said, no, you need to become a doctor. Biology is one of the required subjects. Now you have a learner like that sitting in your class. How will you motivate that learner? Your study guide have tips on how to help these learners to keep motivated and be able to pass biology as a subject at the end of the day. So that concept, make sure you familiarize yourself with it. As well as the concept of a good lesson plan. Planning, it's very important. As you plan your lesson, for you to be able to deliver a quality lesson, for learners to understand a specific or a certain topic, you need to prepare for it. If you are unprepared for that um, topic, 
guaranteed your learners might also have difficulties in, in understanding that specific topic. So what are the content of a good lesson plan? They are nicely outlined in your study guide. Your introduction says, or it plays a very important role. How you introduce a specific topic to the learners, it, it might uh, just give the whole sense of this is something I want to do and I have to understand it, and what, or it will give to your learners, ah, this looks like something I am not interested in. So <coughs> make sure you, you have all the components of a good lesson plan. Your introduction should be captivating. It should let these learners want to be in that class and learn. And the rest of the components of the, the, the lesson plan, what method are you using? Always engage learners in your lesson. So that's why the learner-centered approach is also coming in. Engage the learners. If it is a practical topic, do a practical. D don't just give theory on uh, something that the learners can do. Don't teach, um, let's say, osmosis and give the learners an example. Uh, if you take the tea bag and what, what, take the tea bag practically and put it there. Put it in water, let the learners see. And then, uh, obviously, they will be able to grasp more. So, and a good lesson plan, of course, it also includes the methods of assessment. Depending on our lesson, what are you assessing? If it's a practical work, how are you going to assess this practical work that the learners are doing? If it is a group work, how are you going to assess it? So the assessment method is also important as you do your lesson preparation. So all these items you make sure you go through. As you present your lesson, all of us in the, in, the, in the class you have a board, whether it's a chalkboard or a smart board or whatever board you are using. The work you do on the board, it also determines the quality of your learner's work. So the good board work will help also your, uh, the performance of your learners. So make sure your, your, that concept of good board work you, you go through it, you familiarize yourself with it. What are the do's and the don'ts on your board? A messy board is not, it's a no-no. So you make sure, sometimes if you, you write, you scratch this side, the other side, the learners, some of the learners will be quiet there, but they don't even know what to copy from where. And when it goes in their note, it's a, it's a mess also. So make sure your, your board work is on top, on point. Okay, also the engagement of parents as a biology teacher. You need to play a role also in engaging the community so that the community and the school, they work together in, in teaching and learning. So for, for, for the biology lessons also to be successful, the community needs to be involved. So as a teacher, you should be able to engage the parents also in the learning of their learners. The importance of an unbiased attitude is one of the, is one of the topics that are also covered. Most of the teachers, or most of you, when you graduate, you will be teaching in schools that are having learners from different cultures. And these learners, they will, they, they, they will have different ways of understanding things, and they will have different ways of doing things. And you, as a teacher, you need to be familiar with most of these cultures and also know what to do and what not to do. And how can you be an unbiased teacher? If you are teaching in a community with one culture, it might be easy, but also, even if it is one culture, but maybe you are not from that culture, 
So you need to also learn to respect uh, that uh, specific uh, things that they, it's done or is in, in that specific culture. So you need to, Namibia is a multicultural country and you need to be familiar with yourself with this and your study guide gives you the tips on how to deal with multicultural classroom settings. Now, part of the <clears throat> important uh, part of the, the teaching is the assessment. And a good teacher, you also need to be able to set good question papers. And, and, and some of the question papers, it could be one of the tools that is used is actually the multiple choice question paper how to set quality multiple choice question papers, even to set high level multiple choice question, you need to go through that topic. It's also one of the very important topics. <clears throat> the criteria for moderating question papers and memorandums as a teacher, you will not only be teaching and setting the question papers for learners, of course you will have also the responsibilities at some point of moderating uh, those question papers. So setting and moderating the question papers, uh, quality question papers, you need to go through the topic, uh, as well as the, the whole concept of assessment. What are the features of a good biology teacher? There is a whole lot of <clears throat> list of a good biology teacher, the, the, the features that you can um, check up on your, on your study guide. The involvement with the community, uh, you in promoting uh, several projects in the school, you you being uh, a good lesson planner every time. So these different things, um, be able to deal with multicultural uh, classrooms, these are all um, features of a good biology teacher. So go through this concept of an ideal biology teacher, what is expected of, of, of you. Most of the learners will come to your class and have no idea how to study biology. How will you help these learners? So that's why it's very important for you to also know the concept of study tips for learners. How can you give um, the learners, how can you assist the learners to be able to master their methods of study so they are able to excel in their, in the, in their examination when, when it comes. So the study tips for the learners, as well as the concept of effective classroom management. It's important for a teacher to be able to manage their classroom because learning has to take place with proper classroom management. If you cannot manage your class and maybe there is chaos in the class, you, you won't be able to deliver your lesson successfully. So the, that concept, familiarize yourself with it, as well as when doing assessment, you need to know what tool to use when. Because we, uh, assessment it can be formal, it can be informal. Now, depending on whether it's a formal or informal assessment, you should be able to choose which to use. Are you going to use the checklist or rubrics? So uh, go through that concept of uh, the types of assessment and which tool to use when you are doing which assessment. And this assessment, both of them, they have to be done throughout uh, the assessment. Uh, 
the teacher also need to acquaint themselves or we also need to acquaint ourselves with the development of good uh, PowerPoint presentation. So when you are planning for your lessons, you also have the, the way you are going to deliver your lesson. So if you are using media, you need to develop your, your, your media that it will be able to really carry out what you need to be imparted to the learners. So do not use the media just for the sake of using the media or just for the sake of uh, embracing your audience. Like uh, you want to show all the colorful pictures and maybe the, it's not even related to the subject. So you need to, when you use the media, make sure you have good presentation that you set up. And also, what are the features that you need to have when you are using multimedia? If you are having a poster, what should be your poster be comprised of? A good poster should be able to, you should be able to read even from afar. Not that you have to come and stand and use a microscope, use a microscope to to read whatever is written on that uh, poster. So you need to look at these um, guidelines. What is a good poster comprised of? Uh, how, how can you develop a good poster? Now, other uh, multimedia that you can use, especially in the biology cl uh, classroom, is overhead projectors. If you have transparencies, so you use Certain topics are very difficult for learners to grasp. If you use the transparencies, colorful transparencies, it will capture the attention for those learners and they will be really hooked to the screen and they want to see. So make sure you, you go through this concept and how you can develop these uh, teaching materials to be able to, to carry out your lessons effectively. The concept of supporting learners with different learning problems. Most of the learners that you will find in your class, okay, you will, you will find ideal learners that don't have any problems and they are learning without much of the assistance from you. But you will also find a lot of learners with different learning challenges memory problems. Some learners, they just, they will sit in the class, they think they understand. Tomorrow you ask them, they have no idea what they have learned. How can you assist those learners with the memory uh, problems? Some are having visual problems. Some of the learners, behavior problems. So your guide, your uh, study guide, have given you all the tips how you can assist all these different learners. So you make sure you go through all these topics in details. What are the responsibilities of a biology teacher in promoting hygiene? Not only in your classroom, in the whole school. There are certain committees that are set up at different schools. Maybe you have you are likely to have an hygiene uh, committee or something, you make sure as a biology teacher you are part of it. So, and educate the learners and make sure you, involved, you are involved in most of these um, uh, committees that can promote hygiene in the school. So, uh, those are the topics that will be covered in the examination, make sure you go in details. That is just um, an overview. You make sure you go in details and you study thoroughly all those topics that you have mentioned so that you are prepared for your, for your examination. So as we conclude, we just um, make sure that you go through your whole study guide all the units, as you can see, on the topics that we have um, mentioned, that we have touched here, all the units are covered. And as you 
are preparing for your examination, you go through your assignment as well to prepare. Don't prepare for your examination at the last minute. You start already now. So make sure you, you set enough time for your examination preparation. Otherwise, if you try to do it last minute, you can't even sleep because you are writing the examination tomorrow, it will not work. So make sure you spend enough time on every topic to be able to <clears throat> to be able to to really excel in your exam. And just another reminder, make sure it's you who is writing your exam and not anybody sitting for you. Go through the required verbs, know exactly what each question is requiring from you, and revise your assignment when you are preparing for your examination. Go through the assignment. Look at these words that you find in the assignment as you will also um, definitely, not probably, you will definitely meet them also in your examination. So those uh, are very important verbs. Read your instructions and keep calm in your examination and make sure you understand every instruction before you start attempting that question. I would like to wish you the best for your upcoming exam and just make sure you prepare well and everything will go well. I thank you.